Hello everyone's everyone's I'm here for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta season 6 episode 8. Now before we get into this review like always give us a thumbs up hit subscribe and make sure your notifications are on. So we got Jocelyn she's all in her feelings wishing she had never told Stevie J that she was, he was the father of her child because now she got to deal with him for the rest of Bonnie Biddle's life like we always gonna be connected forever so I don't even want to see him I don't even want him to see the baby I'm just gonna put him on child support unlike Mimi which my question is like why Mimi never put Stevie J on child support like his other what seven eight kids are on child support why didn't she put him on child support because that's just like the way they're going right now if Stevie don't got it then she ain't gonna get it neither at least with child support like he has to pay or he's gonna go to jail but her thing is I'm putting him on child support he gonna pay me my money but me and Bonnie Bella we're going to Miami she got cousins there she got auntie she got uncle she got granddaddy and grandmama and I'm gonna get my music popping there because it's Miami and I'm sitting there thinking what song does Jocelyn have out there that was a hit? Not trying to be shady, just asking a question. Because she seems to think that going to Miami is just going to boost her career all the way in fold. But I'm like, maybe she should rethink that her, you know, hope that whole, you know, going to Miami for my music career. I mean, yeah, going out there to be with your family because, like, that's the only one you got. Like, you really don't have anybody in Atlanta. You and Stevie not really talking, but talking. You only have Melissa and and Jessica Dime and what's her name, Dime. But, you know, Dime, she the type of person. She'll flip with, like, once money is good somewhere else, she's liable to flip on you. So, I'm totally against people trying to keep the other parent away from a child like long as that person ain't trying to be abusive that person's not on drugs and in like in a like unsafe environment i think a child should know each of their parents and i just hope stevie and jocelyn get it together but it's like so much that's going on between them we shall see so Scrappy goes to see Rashida because they didn't really get to talk at Tommy's, you know, a little sip and see because, you know, things went awry between her and Jessica Dime. So he wants to know what's going on. He's like, he was glad that him and Bambi realized that they were, weren't were really meant to be together before they walked down the aisle. And at this point, I think it's Scrappy because you tried it with Erica, that didn't work. Now you didn't got with Bambi and got engaged and that didn't work. Maybe it's just Scrappy at this point. You know, but he's like, like, if Kirk and Rashida don't work, then we have hope for nobody. And I'm like, I do not like it when people, like, put their relationship like, okay, this person, they had the best relationship. Don't compare your relationship, what you have, with your spouse, with somebody else's relationship. Because you don't know what they got going at home. Like, on the surface, it may look all beautiful. But then, like, on the inside, you don't know what them people going through. So, don't be, you know... You know, putting somebody else's relationship on a pedestal like this is the best relationship ever. And this is what I want to be like. Because you don't know what they got going on. But Rashida, she don't know what to do with herself. One minute she want to be with Kurt, but the next minute she don't. Like, the only time they talk is to discuss their kids and the business. Not one time were they bringing up, let's go and get a paternity test done. I don't know why we were on episode 8. And we have not got a paternity test. I'm like, that is simple to see if Kurt is a daddy. Yes, he's still wrong for cheating, but like, we need to see if this is his baby or not. And I said last week, I just want somebody other than doggone. I just want Kirk and Rashida to sit down and discuss okay, we're going to get together, we're going to see the lawyers, and we're going to get a paternity test done legally so I can see if I'm the daddy of this baby. Instead of everybody growing around in groups trying to figure out what's going on, meeting up secretly. Why are, like, these three, Kurt, Rashida, and Jasmine, going to see what's going on with Kurt is daddy? I'm, I'm wondering when is, when is this going to happen? Y'all, I'm sorry about the lighting here. It was brought to my attention that I'm looking greasy. It was really not. It's just that the light is, like, right above me, and it's shining on me, and I'm looking extra glisten glistening right now. But that's not the case. My face is dry as well. And it's just that the lighting, this is the only light I got. And this is the best lighting that I have in my house, unfortunately. So we just gonna have to deal with this. Now we got Carly Red. Now y'all know Carly Red, her whole thing is, I like to be messy and be all up in people's business. But this is when it gets thrown in your face. Because you all, for whatever reason, Carly Red and Cena are friends now. Okay, so she meets up with Cena and Cena lets her know, you know Tommy has been seeing Jock. 
Now she's looking stupid because she thought she had the best relationship out of all her friends. Even though her and Jock were not exclusive and they are not really dating. They just seen each other. How she thought they had the best relationship out of everybody is beyond me. But I have a question, Sina. Like it or Sina, however you say that girl's name. Why did you lie and say that you was like dating Rob? Like what was the point of making like Jack jealous? It's like well, like you wanna make him jealous so he can receive like to come home to you because I still get that vibe but you still want to be with him even though he got with Kadia, you know, the jack of all trades, even though he's like kinda sorta with Carly right now and also dating Tommy. But still you're pining over this man. And question, is Jack still married? Because you know like he didn't, he's married, but he got like three other women pregnant after his wife. I think that's how it goes. Could somebody tell me if Jock is still married? But my whole thing is, Carly, see, this is what happens when you always want to be messy and be up in people's business. Now, you thought she was so happy with Jock, you know, if we're going on the storyline of the show. But now you look and see, like, you're not the only woman in his life. Mimi, you have a lot of gall, nerve, and audacity to be yelling at Melissa in her house. Like, it just couldn't have been me. I'm sorry, y'all. My hair was really cute yesterday, and I forgot to twist it up last night. And I went exercise walking in the park, did my two miles, and this is what happened. Forgive me. Anyway, Mimi is in Melissa's house yelling at her because she's been hanging out and recruiting people for Jocelyn's video. Like, Mimi, one... Don't be yelling at people in their house. Like, you couldn't have been in my house yelling at me because I would have showed the door. But you knew Melissa was friends with Jocelyn. So why are you surprised that she's recruiting recruiting people for Jocelyn's video? It'd been it'd been it'd been different if you did not know that Melissa and Jocelyn were friends. You know that they're friends, but you just don't want to know what they talk about. But you sitting in this girl's house yelling at her. And she's letting you let her, but she's letting you know, like, I am not one of the people who has screwed you over in the past. So, I'm going to need you to bring it down a notch. And then, out of nowhere, she's like, I know where you're mad because I used to sleep with Ari. And I'm like, hold up. What? Like, out of nowhere, Melissa just says, you're mad at me because I used to sleep with Ari. And I'm like, you looked out of becoming friends with me. This is when I went and walked off. I like I looked out becoming your friend. Like, what have you brought to the table that made my life better? You being my friend. So Mimi eventually walks off. But y'all, I'm telling y'all, when she went to go swooping her hair, I just knew it was gonna get stuck on that night lights. Like I was like, when she did it, and I was like, oh lord, it was almost like a slow motion in my mind. I was like, I just saw it getting caught in that night latch when she was trying to be all dramatic. When she storms out. But then she goes over Arian's house. And gets er yelling at Arian. I'm like why are you yelling. Why are you going to people's house. And then yelling at them. Because now she wants to know. How come you ain't tell me that you used to sleep with Melissa. I'm like first of all. What business of that is yours. That you need to know. What Arian was doing with Melissa. First one thing. Why are you in my house yelling. Because we're not going to do that. Secondly. Why do you need to know who she was with? But she was like, that was years ago. And I tried to tell you that, you know, she's a nice person, but she has some messed up ways. And I just wanted to leave it at that. But you really don't need to know what I've been doing. There's something that happened like 20 years ago. You don't need to be on my business about that. But I'm like, I'm with her. And like, why do I need to tell you who I didn't hooked up with? I guess because you was trying to hook up with her. Let Melissa tell them. Like, Melissa, the time's going on. She's becoming messier and messier. It's like we continuously see her on the show. Like, he was getting on my nerves so bad. Cause like, here he is. Yet again, blaming Rashida for him cheating. Because once he knows she get home from working hard, you know, bringing in money to the family. Because I'm assuming, and I'm probably right, that d -Lo Entertainment is not bringing in money. But, you know, her steward is probably bringing in a little something, something, since it's still open. So, when she gets home from working, you know, hard at her store, trying to bring in an income, and she's too tired to give you sex when you want to, you feel that the relationship was over. So, just because I'm not having sex with you right now because I'm tired, the relationship is over. He said out of his mouth, well, I thought we was over. But Rashida didn't know you was over. I'm like, is this what you're saying, girl? I'm telling you. 
when he said that, I just wanted to smack him. Cause now he's like complaining like, I'm being crucified like Jesus. First of all, you will not say that you are being crucified like Jesus. You will not compare yourself to Jesus. You went out there and cheated. And now because Rashida cheated and possibly got somebody pregnant, I might add, now you're mad that Rashid is not forgiving you in the time in which you would like. So now you're comparing yourself to Jesus. Like enough. You talking about enough is enough. Yes, I cheated. Yeah, baby came along. Things like that happened. But you as my wife, you should be forgiving me. No, Kirk Cross. It does not work like that. You cannot be out here cheating on wives and possibly getting people pregnant and expect their, your wife to just be like, you know what? Uh, babies happen every day you know so what you cheated and you could have brought me a you know a, a venereal disease back but you know i forgive you now i know i just found out like two seconds ago but i already forgive you and when he said he's being crucified like jesus y'all if I could jump through the TV, I would have grabbed him all by that huge Adam apple in his throat and just slung him with all the might I could. Because I was like, you're sitting here with all gall, nerve, gall, and audacity to one, blame Rashida because she was too tired for you cheating. And then be mad that she's not forgiving you in a timely manner. Is this what we're doing, Kirk Frost? Rashida needs to leave him. Rashida tend to left him like years ago. But no, she stayed and now we're left with this. And he's just so nice and I like cheated, possibly got her pregnant, who knows. I was paying her bills. I was basically taking care of her, the baby, and two other grown folks paying the bills. That happens every day. You should be forgiving me by now. I'm like, really? You cheated? possibly got somebody pregnant and you was taking money family money and paying this girl off but you're mad that i'm not forgiving you in a timely manner that's what he said so carly red and crew show up to jock's comedy performance you know jock he's your part-time comedian now and he's on a date with Tommy. Crew involves Cena and Melissa of all people. Like, they came in like they were doing something. She wants to know what's going on. But Tommy's like, he's in Tommy land now. What you expect? This is what's going on. Like, Tommy, she is so like, wow. <laughs> it's finally happened. She knows that I am with Jacques. And she's with Jack, which I'm confused. It's like, you and Cena both want to get with Jack and are possibly with Jack, but y'all friends. So, in true love and hip hop, dot, 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 whether it's Atlanta, New York, or Hollywood, Carly goes into pocket and throws money. True love and hip hop fashion. But Tommy was like, girl, she too cheap. She ain't got no hundred dollar bills. She out here throwing ones. And then um lovely Mimi was there with Tommy but she was like uh uh cause Carly got the throwing stuff he's like uh uh girl then Carly says this is the girl who destroyed my friend's marriage meaning Sierra um who destroyed her marriage was her husband and her assistant those who destroyed her marriage lovely Mimi just told her about it so she would no longer you know being looking stupid and you know money coming from her house going on to another person's house so I don't know how that was you know me loving Mimi's fault that you know she was destroying marriages but hey but question why is Carly mad Carly Red mad at Tommy for getting with Jock when Sierra or Cena was getting with Jock as well y'all sitting over here by but but a cuckoo but clearly she wants Jock back but you're all buddy buddy with Cena but you're mad at Tommy I need some clarifications on these things. So that was basically the just went on Mimi and True Mimi fashion. I do not want her around my daughter, which I totally understand why because Eva could have got taken away from Mimi and Stevie off the lie Jason told. But she was like, I, I, you Bonnie Bella's daddy, but I, I will get a restraining order against that gal. And I would, and if she comes around my daughter, she ain't gonna be nowhere near my daughter. And I totally agree with her on that one. So. That was basically the Jessica review. If I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment or video response. And like always, I thank my subscribers and the people who watch my videos. I want you to like this video, comment, and subscribe. And share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and here on YouTube. This is Lady T signing off. 
Have a good one.